Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Kerry McDonald. It's um, my absolute pleasure to host this important webinar um, about communities. I just want to tell everyone that we will be observing two minutes silence at 11 a.m. Today is Armistice Day, um, and it's been a tradition since 1919 that on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month to pause and reflect on the service and sacrifices the armed forces have made. Well, we've called this webinar Asset-Based Community Development. That's ABCD, and I think a lot of you are familiar with the acronym ABCD. And we'll hear from our fantastic speakers in just a minute about what their understanding is of ABCD and how it can best be applied here in Essex. I just want to say the new 10-year Essex strategy for physical activity and sport was recently launched and has been very well received across systems and sectors. And strengthening communities was the number one priority out of five priorities in the strategy. So the team at Active Essex published our implementation plan just last week, which details how we are going to implement the five strategic priorities, including strengthening communities. And that will take us up to March 2023. It's fair to say that for Active Essex and physical activity, ABC has taken off over the past three years, massively supported by our partnership with Nurture Development, led by Cormac Russell, who we will hear from first. The work to encourage local communities to be more active is helped enormously by the fact that Essex has a Sport England local, uh, lo funded local delivery pilot, just one of 12 in England. In partnership with Nurture Development, Active Essex and the local delivery pilot have trained over 350 people in ABCD, over 200 different organisations, the training was delivered with a flavour of how physical activity can play a crucial role in building and strengthening communities. Cormac is currently mentoring politicians, chief executives, senior managers across Essex, and we have plans for our first ever stewardship circle in Essex, funded by Active Essex and championed by Gavin Jones, chief executive of Essex County Council. So these are really exciting times in Essex in terms of a huge momentum shift to prioritizing the power that is already in communities and seeing that, that power radically improve lives and improve the places where people live in Essex. So we have an all-star cast this morning that I know you're going to be thrilled to listen to. I've already referenced Cormac Russell, founder and chief exec of Nurture Development and internationally recognized as a leader in ABCD. We will also hear from Pam Green and Pam Donnelly, senior managers in health and local authority. And we also hear about how ABCD can be championed at grassroots level for Millie Downs and Basil. I will facilitate a Q&A at the end of the session. Please put your questions in the chat box. So let's get this show on the road and let me introduce to you Cormac Russell. Cormac, the virtual floor is all yours. I thought what I'd do is use the few minutes I have to do two things, really. Somebody's saying, Cheryl's saying she can't hear me. Is that an issue for others? Can you, Pam, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Millie, can you? Can others indicate there's a number of people saying, all the panelists can hear me, but there's people sending messages in from the webinar saying, Okay, now, well done. Okay, well, that's great to know. This is really important uh, from an engagement perspective that everybody can participate um, and hear. So, so much appreciated. And listen, we're, we're guests in your conversation. You're not guests in ours. So please keep the questions coming in. Please, kind of, you know, there's no such thing as a silly question. So if I'm using language or I'm saying something you want clarity around, pitch it in and I'll be very happy to address that. Uh, Millie, Kerry, Pam, and others will probably keep an eye to the chat as well and just help us be, be attentive uh, to that. Look, let me take a few minutes to say, as I said, two things. One, 
is I want to just talk a little bit about the practice of ABCD uh, in Essex and, and, and around the world as well. So I'll just say a few words on that. And the other is to catch you up particularly on what we're doing within the uh, context of uh, Essex itself and particularly in partnership uh, with Kerry, Jason and, and, and Active Essex. And, and indeed, you know, what's very exciting about what I'm going to share is I think the genie is really out of the bottle in Essex in terms of thinking in more citizen-led and citizen-centered ways. I, I want to use a slideshow, if I may, just very briefly, uh, because it'll keep me on track and I have a limited amount of time. Here we go. All right. So I suppose one of the ways that we can think about uh, the work that we're doing together uh, in Essex is we could think about it's, it's a learning journey, an, an overused term, but I think an important one to lift up. So we're growing our wings on the way down here. There's, a, there's an element of courage in trying to figure out how we become even more community centered, building on the great stuff that's already going on. And it's been fantastic to work with uh, Kerry and the team on this because in a lot of ways, what they're saying is we're opening up space, keeping a clear line of sight on sport, physical activity and moving more, but also being really mindful. Now, this is a very expansive conversation that's going to help us think in a very meaningful way about well-being and well-being, as you know, is a very broad term. A lot of our work, I would say, is hanging on these eight touchstones. And I thought it would be useful to briefly, because 20 minutes comes in fast, to talk you through these. So I think we've now, I think we're on session five across the county of Essex, where we've done an eight module ABCD training course. This takes people really deeply into conceptual and practical understandings of ABCD. So you're leaving with very, very solid and authentic tools for relocating authority into the hands of communities and really supporting them to have a sense of agency and authority around how they make change happen while still being there to have their back and supplement them with the services that they require. So that's, that's happening already. The genie is out of that bottle, as I've said. Now, when you work with over 100 people very intensively across the county, all kinds of prospects start to open up. So we know already from having had the pleasure, and it's a, a privilege too, to be alongside folks and train uh, folks around ABCD, that People are coming back to us with stories. They're coming back to Kerry with stories. They're talking about how their practice is changing. They're talking about different things that they're trying out and maybe some things that they're stopping as well. But a big feature of what we're seeing is these eight touchstones. And I'll talk you through them now because I think they're really starting to show ground and they're really starting to give us a flavor of what's possible going forward. Now, the other thing that we're doing is, is we're working very closely with uh, friends and partners in uh, Colchester and Basildon. Hugely exciting things happening because they've taken care uh, at the uh, sort of leadership level to think about not alone how we do this in a neighborhood, in places, but also how do we make ABCD real in the way we commission services and in the way we lead. The simple idea that every community has more than the outsider can see, and more than perhaps the community can see when it comes to well being, is at the heart of what we're talking about. You might say, what's the big deal in that? And I, I think that's a fair question, actually, because all we're really doing is making visible what's invisible, making visible the idea that communities are primary agents of change when it comes to physical activity, well being, prosperity, aging well, you know, caring for our children. And I think also perhaps it's important to say caring for our planet, okay? We remember um, today um, the services uh, of those who've sacrificed so much uh, in order to try to maintain peace and to give our communities the space to flourish. Uh, they did that because there's value in our communities. There's common wealth in our communities. And I have to say hats off 
uh, to Jason and to Kerry and, and the team uh, at Active Essex for believing in that and shining a light on that. And can I also say hats off to so many people on the call here today who are supporting that and are getting behind that. We need that sponsorship to continue. That's not, it's not an uncontested idea. There's still a lot of people who would say, actually the best solutions come from outside in. Uh, the best way to solve problems is more programs, more services, more top down. So it's folks like you who say, actually the alternative story where we have institutions on tap, not on top, and where we're inviting people to step into a sense of agency while being respectful of their precarious circumstances and, and walking alongside them with the whole of their story. That's not easy work. It's not easy to do on a good day. It's a lot harder to do when you've got outside folks coming in and contesting it, but that's the work. And you know we don't get a free pass to do this work. We have to sing for our supper. We have to establish that this work is worth doing by evidence of impact, by sharing the stories, and also by having the cover, the sponsorship and the legitimacy that people like you bring. So part of what I'm saying today, part of my job in a sense, is to continue to ask you to be alongside this work as well as do this work, to continue to champion and to continue to give your sponsorship and to challenge us too. Uh, when things are not as authentic or as community led as they could be. Let's give each other that pushback. You know, it's part of being a community is asking the tough questions, is dissenting all over the UK now. And this is an incomplete list, but this is the list I've gotten permission to show uh, from other places all over the UK. The conversation is changing and the conversation is changing in such a way that I think I feel hope in a way that I haven't for about 10 years for, for democracy, actually, as, as much as what's happening locally. I think the conversation is saying, in a democracy, citizens are at the center. We've got to find a way of lifting them up, and we will not lift them up by putting them down. So a lot of what we're trying to do here is, you know, in places like West Croydon, uh, in Hodgehill, in Birmingham, uh, in Leeds, uh, in South Ayrshire, and the, the list keeps going on and on and on, and now all over Essex, is to invite a different conversation. I don't have a huge amount of time, so I want to whistle into this. This is conversation, by the way, not just happening in the UK. This is happening in 36 countries around the world where nurture development is working. So this is a conversation that is part of a worldwide movement to restore the citizen to the heart of democracy and say, community is the way that we will flourish forward fairly. It isn't just about the person, it isn't just about the individual, of course they're at the heart of this, but we need each other, we are social animals. And I think we're beginning to remember that again. So let me quickly share with you uh, these touchstones and I'll say a word or two then about the training that we're doing. I love, I have to say, uh, being part of community and finding the inventiveness in community. But I think we have to be strategic. And if we're going to make sure that what we do is actually owned and led by local people, we have a lot of hard work to do in making that happen. So, you know, that's not going to happen by stepping stones. There isn't a paint by numbers way of doing ABCD. And that's why we spent so much time in training. And that's why now we're getting alongside uh, for the first time in the new year, a leadership group. And of course, leadership comes from everywhere. But what we want to really begin to do with this first, what we're calling stewardship group, is to say to folks who have the privilege, and it is a privilege, to hold leadership in an organization. If you're interested in learning how to support, to catalyze, community-led action and not just provide top-down services. Let's, let's, let's have a conversation together. Let's form a stewardship circle and let's get that going more because it's lovely to do the work on the ground. There's nothing more nourishing and nothing more fun, but it's, there's nothing more demoralizing than having done that work and then a policy being introduced which undoes that work the next day. So we need 
And, and again, with the stewardship and this wonderful 10 year strategic plan uh, that the LDP have, after Active Essex have, which really puts community at the heart of this. There's a recognition that this has to be a whole systems approach, that leadership, of course, comes from the grassroots. It also comes from how people steward their institutional assets so that they can be put at the disposal of community building. And that's messy. That's kind of also playful and fun, but it can actually involve a lot of difficult choices and courage. It does require a lot of courage. And again, hats off to those who are already taking some of those courageous choices. But I think we're going to have more to make uh, in the months and weeks ahead. I'll quickly say that as we, as, we, as we talk about this, what we're talking about, and I'll talk you through these eight touchstones, what we're talking about is, the, I suppose, baking the eight touchstones into how we do things around here. Right? Not as the prescribed methodology, this is the only way you can work, but as a really fun way of working. I think the first thing that we're saying over and over again, and we're seeing already now, is let's really make sure if we're doing sustainable work, that we find ways of finding local folks and bringing them together and figuring out ways that they can be in the driving seat. Not landing all the responsibility on them, but making sure that we find ways that we can put people up front, that we can build the connectorship that's needed to actually own the change in communities, because that's the only way we're going to change population health. And the only way we're going to change culture is to build that associational life. So that's touchstone one. Let's find those community builder teams that are in neighborhoods. There are connectors in every single neighborhood. Let's find them. And that's the work we're doing now. There are community builders. And Kerry and I really want to lift up this message. Ultimately, the community building has to be done by people who live in the community. But we can help that in all kinds of ways. There are really gifted professionals who know how to support the connections and know how to feature community leadership and community passion in the work. So let's put that uh, you know, front and center of what we're trying to do. I don't have the time to get into too much more detail on that, but I do want to say that the other thing that we're seeing now, as well as you know, local people getting more of an opportunity to center their voice and their dreams in the conversation, we're also seeing a lot of very thoughtful professionals figuring out how do I animate more citizenship and not just how do I get more clients in my programs? And that's really important. More and more we're hearing professionals say, you know what? The light bulb's gone off for me. And I know people don't care what I know or what I have to offer until I show them that I care about them enough to find out what they have to offer. So this is really important because what we're seeing is community animators in the neighborhoods now, and they're coming from everywhere. They, you know, Practitioners who say, I want to see people not just as needy, but also as needed. And to invite them out for their strengths and for their gifts and for their contributions, and not just see them as a bundle of problems for me to fix. And I think that's a revolution. I think to see that happening and it's breaking out all over Essex and has been for a long time. I don't take credit for that. Nurture Development doesn't take credit for that. And Active Essex isn't taking credit. This isn't about taking credit. It's about celebrating and being excited about that possibility, but also wondering how do we go deeper? How do we enable more of that to flourish? The other thing that I think we're seeing, and it's energizing uh, for everybody that's involved, is we're seeing different conversations happening. You know, we're, we're seeing a pivot from ain't it awful to what's possible. We're seeing conversations that are about, you know, what's strong and not what's wrong. We're seeing conversations that are serious about, let's discover what's good about this place. Yes, there's precariousness. Yes, there's poverty. Yes, there's trauma. Let's not ignore that. But if we're serious about addressing that, can we please begin to have conversations that show respect? for the capacities of people there. And that is happening. Those conversations are happening in all kinds of inventive and creative ways that in a million years, I couldn't think of on my own because people are going out there and they're having those conversations. We're giving each other a good listening to. And starting from that premise that you are the person 
with the lived reality and experience to figure out best what's going to work in this situation let's 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 work it through let's have that conversation and i think that starts very much by appreciating what's actually already in communities it's very interesting when we ask conversations that are about what people have that surrounds them and within them that we're moving into a conversation that's very much about a relationship and contact with people rather than selling them our content you know so this is a really important shift I think the other thing that's really important, and it is a shift that I'm seeing, and I want to name it, I'm seeing it particularly in the depth of our work in Colchester and the depth of our work in Basildon. Uh, I'm seeing a real serious commitment to getting out of silos and thinking about things in isolated ways. So I only work with children. I only work with homeless. I only work with people with disabilities too. Actually, I do all of that, and it's really important work. And also, I work in neighborhoods, that neighborhoods are a unit of change. And in fact, the individuals that I work with, if they had more associational life, if they had more connections and more networks, their outcomes would improve. We know from ONS labor market surveys uh, that people are four times more likely to get a job if they have a deep social network. We also know at the moment that most people who are long-term employed have very weak, fragile social networks. And yet most of our organizations are set up not to deal with the network issue. We just deal with what we think is the issue, which is unemployment or homelessness. Now, what I am really excited about and what I'm seeing very clearly happen, and this, you know, I mean, again, it's, it's been really interesting. This would not have happened, but for the LDP and, and guys like you, uh, folks like you creating the space for it to happen and then to do it, to make it real. What I think is happening is, is we're seeing more and more clubs, groups, social networks uh, being curious about what they can do to be helpful, to ensure that our economies, our local economies are flourishing because we're going to be doing it hard for quite some time. And particularly the communities that have been doing it hard pre-COVID are going to have a lot of challenges on their hands, economic challenges, well-being challenges. So how do we get in ahead of that and really begin to draw in the power of the associations, the clubs, the groups, and, and young people? Not, this isn't just about you know uh, a certain category of people who are engaged in community life already. They're important, but there's many ways to contribute. These guys are doing a map jam in Croydon. They're, they're actually figuring out where are all the online communities and what are their passions? What would they be prepared to, to you know, bring to the party? Um, and you can see they're smiling because they've figured out that they've actually, they're capable, they have the digital nous uh, and native uh, wit to be able to map out a whole range of people who are now participating and coming up with ideas about how to make things better. In every single neighborhood, in Essex, in every single small bounded place, village, estate, outer estate, town. There are associations. Many of them are not talking to each other. Many of them are focused on their core issue, but also many, I would say most, if not all, are willing to get more connected and have a conversation about how we flourish forward fairly, how we can move more and what it is we care about enough to act upon. And I think that's the conversation of the future. When these associations form an association of associations in every village, and those villages can have voice from the grassroots up across Essex, I think that is the awakening of a sleeping giant. And we're seeing that already happening. We saw it during COVID and the early lockdown periods. But now I think what Kerry and Jason and the team and, and you are doing is I think you're trying to be a positive precipitant. COVID precipitated an awful lot of community activity and community response. The question is, what's the positive alternative to COVID? And I would say at least in part, what you're doing and what we're trying to do collectively could be that. We could precipitate more of those associations. And instead of setting up funding structures that make them compete with each other, we could really create the conditions within which they work together and they network. So that's, that's a big piece of where we're at. Just in conclusion, I would say we're 
probably also going to have to be very thoughtful in terms of community building at neighborhood level to reach those that are most at the margins, that are most likely to not have their gifts seen or received and figure out ways that we can create the conditions for that to happen. And this is particularly complex given you know, social distancing, uh, what I prefer to call physical distancing, but you know, we still have to figure it out. Um, I love some of the stories that are emerging from our work around the world, and I see some of it in Essex as well. But let's invite people, if they have skills to share, let's, let's, let's bring them along, let's, let's get them sharing skills. In these photographs, you see a lady talking about her passion for beekeeping, somebody else talking about their passion for planting, other guys talking about their passion, well, they're not actually talking, but at least they're together, uh, exhibiting their passion for being online, but at least they're online, on land together, instead of just in isolation. And so in all kinds of ways, these guys are passionate about repairing things, this lady about seed swapping, all of these people are moving more. They're active. They're involved in their communities. They're defining themselves by what they contribute, not just by what they receive. They are being citizens. And the question is, how do we support more of that? How do we support people to create a vision, have their own plan, have their own sense of agency around it, but also hold outside agencies to account for the things that their communities need? And I think, you know, that's, a, that's about action. That's about doing. You know, we always carry and I, when we talk, we always talk, you know, what's this going to look like? You know, what's the action? What's the impact? And it's important because you can lose sight of that very quickly. But all of this is about how do we have a conversation where people can really figure out what they care about enough to act upon and how we can support them with that, to participate more, to show up more, to have a sense of I am somebody, I matter, I am enough, not just to myself, but to my community. And boy, is that worth fostering celebration around. We have a lot to be proud of, but there's more to be done. And I thank you for your, your, uh, your friendship in that, that effort. Kerry, back to you. Cool, Mac, thank you so much. It's so fascinating, very and incredibly inspiring. Um, please put your questions for Paul Mac in the chat function. Please, please, please put your questions for Paul Mac. We're going to hear now from, from Pam Green, Senior Manager in Health in North East Essex, a great friend of Active Essex and the local delivery pilot. We're going to hear from Pam Green for 10 minutes and Pam Donnelly for 10 minutes, which hopefully, if we sound time, will take us through to just before 11 o'clock and our two minute silence. Pam Green is a recent convert to ABCD, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Pam. Thank you, Kerry. It's it's very auspicious to, to follow Cormac. I'm really not sure that uh, I'm going to be able to do uh, it justice, but I'll give it my best shot. So, um, and it's really, when you're talking about these things, it's quite off-putting not to be able to see a sea of faces. So um, just put things in the chat or shout out if you think uh, there's something you want to, to raise with me directly. So uh, as Kerry says, um, I'm Chief Operating Officer of uh, North East Essex Clinical Commissioning Group. What the hell does that mean, you might ask me? So I'm the responsible officer for the health um, services for the population of uh, North East Essex, which covers Colchester and Tendring, which is 360,000 population, roughly. But I define myself by being a physiotherapist by trade. Um, can I have the next slide, please, Courtney? Um, and I think it's important that I say, I say I'm a physiotherapist by trade because actually one of the things that um, I think would have massively changed my practice would have been if uh, ABCD had been taught to me during my undergraduate training. And I'd have had the opportunity to learn in the community with community leaders more about people and citizens and the community as opposed to the clinical model that we we get trained in so much. I've been able to draw on my clinical training um, during my senior management role so many times and I'm not saying it, it's, it's um, lacking from that perspective, but in order to facilitate a whole um, system and not have a one size fits all approach, ABCD is the jewel in that piece of training for me. 
Um, I'd been made aware of the concept of ABCD by the interactions that I'd had with my voluntary sector colleagues. And I vividly remember the first place that it was explained to me and the name Cormac Russell uh, was mentioned. And it was when I was set, sat within Essex County Council trying to connect up uh, education with health and think about life expectancy and what could we do differently. And it just was not within my grasp of um, health and the traditional networks I had within health to be able to connect at that level. The brilliant thing about being the sponsor or one of the sponsors of the local delivery pilot was that I got the opportunity to do the two day training. And that was in 2019. And it has fundamentally changed me as a person, as a leader um, since that day. And I had the luxury of training and networking with so many people across Essex, um, understanding more about um, the local authority and how it works and districts and boroughs. And actually, that was a massive asset um, in the new way of working around place. So. I had then uh, the opportunity as a leader within North East Essex to hardwire ABCD into um, the North East Essex commissioning approach and be able to uh, ensure that my team uh, took that approach into the communications and interactions they had with both any of the communities uh, or citizens. And I remember presiding over conversations with the communities that uh, we've had very difficult conversations, uh, conversations about closing um, uh, emergency services, uh, access, uh, A&Es changing their function. And actually, had we have had an ABCD approach to that previously, I think we could have got a much better outcome. So it, it's made me feel so much more confident um, and connected with the community to be able to have conversations and get a richer um, conversation going. And it is a fundamental component of the Neighbourhoods programme. And I'm really interested that um, Cormac has said that neighbourhoods now become a, 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 a you know, a level of currency uh, within our system. And I, I firmly believe that. I um, grew up in a small uh, village not very many resources where people had to rely on each other um and actually uh, you know that for me is is my sort of default position i live now in a community uh called brightlingsea which some of you may or may not be aware of and one of the greatest uh community assets that that we have there is the connection between people the sense of community but also the fact that um things like the lido has been saved by the community coming together and they've made such a real flourishing asset for the community um that it's a b c d and work and i know the local delivery pilot has supported those that way of working next slide please thank you so during my training, I, I, I managed to get a couple of key quotes from um, Chris Chinnock, who was the, the uh, lead for those sessions. And things like keep a welcome at the edges. And that might be his terminology. It could be Cormax. I don't know who I'm referencing. But actually, it keeps drumming through my, uh, my memory and changes the way that I work. Um, I think that one of the most important things for me is ABCD complements uh, compassionate leadership styles. And everything I'd had within my executive leadership training was about hierarchical leadership, was about power base, was about getting to yes very, very quickly, as opposed to keeping that uh, welcome at the edges and getting a very rich story and ensuring that we understood micro infrastructure. I am I'm sure that we have done damage with money in previous times by not having that conversation. And I, I now feel very moral about how we invest in our communities uh, and protect that um, micro infrastructure. And my colleagues uh, with me uh, within the CCG, who we have a sizable uh, you know, budget to look after, half a billion pounds roughly, um, are, are all picking up on that now. And uh, Kerry, you said about 350 people being able to be trained but we actually uh, invested in the training um, outside of the LDP funding and trained all of our workforce so that I, I 
you know, I fundamentally believe that they're taking this into everything that they do now. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide. Thank you. Um, so I've covered a little bit of that. So um, it is, uh, you know, what we saw through the pandemic was a, a single common purpose and this uh, single approach uh, within uh, North East Essex to really look at um, the, the assets within our communities to protect people and save lives. You know, that was the fundamental. And uh, we were fortunate that we'd started ABCD prior to uh, the pandemic and we continued the training, um, even though it was virtual, it didn't quite give you exactly the same sense of learning with your peers across organizations, we continued that. And I think that put us in a really good position. We'd also done uh, a set of asset, oh, uh, back to the previous slide, please. Thank you. A set of asset mapping. And for me, um, asset mapping had value before the pandemic, but it has incredible value now. And every conversation now that we have with our communities, I keep hearing that the bike scheme uh, is linked up with uh, people within the community, the homeless. Um, people are thinking about advocacy. They're thinking about being active and getting out to um, uh, allotments. And we're commissioning gardens and within our GP practices and all sorts of things now. Whereas four years ago, the conversation about green uh, prescribing was just a really difficult one to get people to engage with. So I think we're connecting the loop. You know, that's the really good thing. Uh, and it's coming from a strategic level and we're able to challenge anybody within our system that that departs from that approach. And I think um, that's really critical. One of the big things that we have uh, within our system is that we commission the voluntary sector to do our social prescribing. And I think um, with the connections that they have with the local delivery pilot, um, that again connects up lots of our assets and gives us a greater, a greater value. Uh, next slide, please. So this just um, gives you a demonstration of this is an extract of how we've put uh, asset based community development into our local strategies, our local delivery plan. Uh, so shares the same acronym as the local delivery pilot. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's uh, it's really hardwired in everything we do. So if you if you talk to people across our integrated care system about the two principles that North East Essex um, Alliance um, applies is asset based community development and uh, also outcomes based accountability. They're very rich conversations turning that dial around um, from uh, hierarchical delivery to uh, bottom up development of our services and how we interact with our communities. The, the vaccination programme is the, is the classic example of that really challenging approach um, and done best with our communities as opposed to to our communities. So I'm going to finish up now, but um, the most uh, I, I use a quite crass term, but the, the most valuable piece of management training I have had is my asset based community development training. It's turned me, every other piece of training I had turned me into somebody that was uh, probably brash, managerial, didn't use a common language, jargon, trained me to be jargonistic. Actually, it was the most freeing up piece of training to be able to speak plain English, to talk about what's rich in the community, as opposed to um, that management style that had been indoctrinated into me before. Last slide, please. So just a quick, very, very quick story. I tell the story that when I went for my training in Chelmsford, when we could train together back in those days, I actually incurred a £120 parking ticket from uh, the cricket ground. Um, I won't go into the details of how I thought I'd paid, but I had missed it by a couple of minutes, then tried to challenge it. And it amassed to £120. And I still think it's the most valuable piece of training I've ever had. So that tells you uh, where I'm at with uh, asset based community development. Thank you. Thank you. Pam. Thank you so much, Pam Green. Um, it's really powerful to hear your ABCD, ABCD story and your ABCD journey. The Swimming Lido story is absolutely one of my favorites for Essex. 
and the fact you've trained all your staff in ABCD is is incredible. It's 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 just brilliant. To hear. So from one and, pan, so from one pan to another, because I'm very conscious that we're going to break at eleven o'clock for a two minute silence. I want to welcome Pam Donnelly, who's a senior manager at Colchester Borough Council. Pam, over to you. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Kerry. I'm just so glad it wasn't Colchester Borough Council that gave Pam the ticket. Uh, otherwise, I'm sure we'd never have heard the end of it. But you won't be surprised to hear that Pam Green and I work very closely uh, in this area of work, uh, particularly with regard to neighbourhoods, which I'll come on to in a moment. I will actually have to physically leave to go down to the town hall steps at 5 to 11, so I'll need to talk quickly. I've got some background slides here. Could you go to the next one, please, Courtney? Which really just give you a flavour, and hopefully when they're shared later, uh, will give you an opportunity just to reflect on some of the content. And then I'd just like to finish off by giving some examples of how we've translated everything uh, that Cormac and Pam has have said into uh, practical um, uh, implementation. So I'm not showing this slide because I want to show off about Colchester. I can do that in another place. What I've tried to do is to just give you a sense of the range of opportunities that we have. If you just focus on the green and blue space that we have within our communities, 42 miles of beautiful river and coast, it just, just one example. Another being the parks and green spaces, 372 acres. So if we can't make a go of it here in Colchester, I'm not sure who can, because we've got some fantastic assets in our community. So what did we set out to do? Next slide, please. This is a rather clumsy phrase, but I haven't changed it because I think there, it includes a number of really important uh, points. So our aim as a borough council we set out to do a number of things. First of all, to try and make sure our approach to communities was completely inclusive. And um, most people on this call will know how incredibly difficult that is. And it's all very well talking about bottom up, but it's, of course, it's much easier to do it top down. So it's hard work in the way that um, uh, Cormac described, but so worthwhile. And very much driven by the community itself. And I was very taken in Cormac's initial comments about making sure that people feel valued and they recognize their contribution to the community in which they live and work. And I can't really move on to the next slide without talking a little bit about uh, uh, inequalities. So before we went into the pandemic, and, and this in many ways uh, was the catalyst for our shared agenda with our colleagues in the CCG and others, uh, we have a problem in Colchester, as do colleagues in Tendring, with really quite deeply rooted inequalities. And you won't be surprised to hear that during the course of the pandemic, those uh, inequalities have worsened. And the real power of our asset-based communities development programme, which we call Communities Can, because we think it really describes uh, the imperative and the call to action, um, the real benefit of that is in tackling some of these really long-standing embedded problems in our community. So that gives us a real focus and, and a real challenge. This is something you might choose to look at later, but for me, the roadmap just gives you a little bit of an indication of where you're coming from and where you can end up. And the wiggly line or the wiggly road is intended really to reflect Cormac's point about the stepping stones. It isn't a straightforward route map. You have to go around a number of corners, a number of obstacles to get to truly transformed uh, community um, development. Next slide, please. I'd encourage you, if you get the opportunity, to just look at these in a bit more detail when um, this webinar is finished. But I'd like to go back to a point that Pam was talking about, the training. That is where we began in accessing some of the training around ABCD and just getting for the very first time an insight into the power of that. I'm making sure that it wasn't just a training exercise, but as Pam also said, ensuring that all of the principles in the training were truly embedded in what we do, how we do it, our policies, and again, just checking ourselves on a consistent basis, and we need to do more of this, that we really are uh, taking a citizen-led approach. 
Next slide, please. So a couple of other really important pointers as far as our next steps on this journey is concerned. First of all, the opportunity to focus funding opportunities. And we are successful in Colchester in securing quite a lot of grant funding and making sure that grant funding um, is very much focused on supporting communities to support themselves. The key words that we all know and, um, and hopefully work to, the ideas of co-production and working collaboratively. Again, really quite easy phrases to trot out, incredibly hard to do. And perhaps in a very pragmatic way, also thinking about what we do with our money. And Pam talked about the half a billion pounds of resources within the remit of the CCG. Well, how much more could there be if we looked at opportunities as we do? And we're grateful to the CCG for supporting in, supporting us with this approach, looking at the power of pooling assets across the borough and what that can mean, whether it's a building we share or whether that's some funding uh, that we uh, secure. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, a couple of points about uh, vulnerability. I already talked about inequalities and it's a point that was made earlier about making sure that marginalised communities, as we talk, as we refer to them, are truly embedded in our uh, attempt and our strategy to reduce the inequalities that exist. Uh, and finally, uh, on this slide, before I come to my examples, just making sure that a basic principle around the fair distribution of health and well-being across our borough is embedded in everything we do and how we do it. So before I conclude, I just want to give you a couple of examples of what that really has meant for us. And in case I run out of time, I'm going to start with the future and then look back. So Pam talked about neighbourhoods and we're embedded in neighbourhoods. That's what we are, we are all about as a borough council. We have the, the uh, democratic mandate through our ward councillors to operate in neighbourhoods. However, there is a huge opportunity on the horizon, at the short term horizon, I'm pleased to say, to test some of the abilities across our system to work together in a truly integrated way in neighbourhoods, in communities. So the programme of work that uh, Pam was describing is one that we're working on uh, in a collaborative and uh, co-design uh, sort of way and making sure that the first pilot neighbourhood project in central Colchester is as successful as it possibly can be. And she and I are working very closely on making sure the leadership is there, it's shared and it's embedded with our communities. So a couple of examples of what we've done already. So our community action days, we in the past, I remember when I first came to work for the borough, we used to come up in a darkened room somewhere um, with a list of ideas about things that could be the basis for a community action day. We don't do that anymore. We listen to what the community said, we engage with that community, involve them so that they shape that action day. And we make sure that all of our partners are engaged, including those that are in the business sector too. Making really important links between economic prosperity and jobs and really good health outcomes. Another example, and I'm sure everyone on the call can relate to this one, is the opportunity we had during the pandemic to really be community led and listen to and take note of and respect those community leaders that came forward and took ownership of the challenges within their own communities. And we've done all that we can to make sure they have the information they need. An example would be our uh, community response pack, which was changed at the very beginning of the pandemic pandemic almost daily to reflect new and emerging opportunities to support communities within communities. But of course it would be remiss of me to conclude without mentioning the LDP, the local delivery pilot, and what a huge difference that's made to what we really do and how we really enable our communities. And the LDP has given us the chance in Colchester to really co-produce so an example of that would be uh, falls prevention, particularly, and, and we know that this is a problem right now, as people are spending, sadly, longer on waiting lists for elective surgery than they might previously have done, and therefore a level of vulnerability. I think that the phrase deconditioning comes to mind. And the opportunities to work with communities to make sure those individuals stay as well as they can, so when their surgery comes, 
they're well placed to um, make sure that that's successful. I think that's probably all I've got time to say, otherwise I'll be late for the mayor and that wouldn't be a great idea. But I do hope that was useful to you and that uh, over the next few days you get a chance to look at the slides in a bit more detail. And I'm sorry I had to rattle through. Thanks, Kerry. And Donnelly, thank you so much. Such really useful insight there from a local authority perspective. And thank you for referencing the, the local delivery pilot where we, we're on a journey of honest and trusted. The words we use now are co-design and co-production, but the key words are, are honest and trusted. So we've got just a few minutes before 11 o'clock when we're going to break for a couple of minutes. There's a few questions in the Q&A and the, and, the, and the chat. Um, so I'm going to ask those questions. We've got, we've got Pam Green and Cormac with us. And this is a really interesting question. Is ABCD mainly about citizens getting together informally or formally, or it just doesn't matter? So maybe Cormac, you'd like to just respond to that one, please. Sure, sure. sure. I think it, it, it really depends on what they're trying to respond to and achieve. So in the first instance, it's about people figuring out how they can grow enough trust to agree common priorities. So I would say the, the best way to grow that trust, if you don't know people, is informally doing stuff that's enjoyable rather than sitting around expressing opinions. Opinions tend to be a great way to divide rather than build trust. So you see an awful lot of informal activities which are about doing things to make the neighborhood better, see a lot of, you know, greening spaces, activities, things like that. But you could very easily misinterpret that and say that's that, and, you know. What, what's the big deal? It's nice, it's, it builds relationships, but is there anything else that's of consequence there? And of course, there's a whole range of things that people would then also say are priorities. Perhaps, for example, they want to collectivize to make sure that they uh, care for their local economy or they care for their environment. And they may need to get a little bit more organized, a little bit more intentional about how they grow power um, and so it really does depend on the context. A lot of this stuff is done at the speed of trust. So, you know, you've got to date a while before you propose marriage, as it were. Um, and so there tends to be a little bit of a, a lead in time to getting more organized, which is wise in my view. Um, but all the time, the question is, who here has the power to make change happen? Uh, what can we do ourselves? What can we do with a little help? And what do we need outsiders to do? So sometimes we do also need to get organized and formalized to be able to say to outside agencies, here's how you can be useful without overrunning or overwhelming us. Thank you, uh, Colm. That, that, that phrase, speed of trust, is, is, is really, really powerful. I'm on the Active Essex team and the ODP. Um, are absolutely deploying like move at the speed to the speed of, of trust and, and and one thing i've noticed and, I, and, and we'll break in a minute and we'll we'll come up with more questions but we need to hear from millie as well from 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 Basildon, is something that i've heard of in your know comment you probably know Pam, the empathy gap and that's how distant is the empathy between those with power and resources so-called power and resources and those citizens without power and resources. And the closer you can get with empathy to that, so they meet in the middle, the more impact that it has. And there's some unbelievable leaders, system leaders now, who have community in their heart. I'm stealing from your phrase here, Cormac, unashamedly, rather than just community in their title, they have community in their heart and community in their title. That. So just that, that empathy gap closing is what I'm starting to see in Essex amongst our, our system leaders. I'm going to break uh, now for, for two minutes so that um, we can have a silence to pause and reflect on the service and sacrifices that all of our armed forces have made on our behalf. I'll turn off my camera and then I'll come back after two minutes. So two minutes silence now. So, uh, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Um, 
We are now going to hear, I'm delighted to introduce um, Millie Downs. And we'll hear about how ABCD is, is working on the ground in Pasadena. So we'll hear from Millie for 10 minutes, then we're still looking to wrap up round about 11.15 after we've taken just a couple more questions. Millie, over to you. Cool. Thank you very much, Kerry. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Millie Downs. I'm the Communities Manager at Basildon Borough Council. Uh, I do have a few slides to share, so I'm just going to get them up on the screen now. Um, and hopefully you can all see those. Um, so at Basildon, um, really today what I'm, I'm going to talk about is how ABCD and the work we've been doing has influenced us to create a, a policy in itself, really. So, um, and with that comes a strategy, and we're calling that Connected Communities. So, back in December through till February this year, we had learning conversations, and really a lot of councils, including Basildon, love to stick out a generic kind of quiz question consultation style and say, yep, tick the box, we've done it. And we're really trying to move away from that and, and have more of these learning conversations, which are really aiming to discover the assets in the community. And those green bubbles just around the screen are, are some of the types of people, organisations and groups that we were talking to and we spoke to. And it's, you know, we want to be clear that we really can't engage everybody. Basildon is huge. We comprise the five different towns. They're very different towns and we can't connect with every single resident. However, what we were trying to do is really speak to those community connectors, those community animators as well, uh, and really understand where our role was in the community. So not talking borough wide, but sort of at that micro level, so more kind of neighborhood wide, or it might be a street or an estate. Um, there are lots of different kind of builds and makeups in Basildon. So really trying to understand how they differ and kind of what our role is as well. From this uh, influence the connected communities policy and strategy. And the vision statement there is, is that communities feel that they have a strong connection to themselves, each other and the place in which they live. And this focuses on three pillars, which are neighbourhoods, council and partnerships, which I'll go through in a little bit more detail now. So starting with neighbourhoods, this one is really, really about ensuring that positive change, positive action, activity is done by communities. And where that can't happen, how can we do that with communities? Because there are going to be times when communities cannot do everything by themselves and we shouldn't expect them to. But we're really realising that, that we're a tool that communities can use to, to create this positive action. and. We at Basildon have been going through some training with nurture development and we had a really, really interesting conversation just last week, actually, with a couple of partners and staff within the council about how we can kind of use terminology to help us really understand our role. And we really are those community activators. We're about kind of connecting everybody with the, the, the glue to introducing organisations and residents to different services and different activities and different people with different gifts talents passions all of those things and about engaging the skills of people and and identifying the connectors as well in the community and and from that we're building trust we're building relationships in the community you know Cormac was saying how we don't just just go in and do two communities and we don't kind of do a do a, a half-hearted consultation and say oh yeah this is for you you said you might like that um, without really working with them and understanding how they can complete that activity by themselves as well. So the next one is Connected Council. And this one is a little bit different. Uh, so it's mostly focusing on, I suppose, internal first. So like I mentioned, we've been doing lots of training. We've had leadership training with our directors, our senior leadership team, managers, service managers, and anyone that's kind of, you know, got a big influence in the work that they do. And they, we've also had training with staff as well. So not just the communities team or resident involvement, we're also having different departments within the council on there. So our frontline services and also our data and insight team and also our strategy and policy team, because as much as we've got this, this strategy and this policy and, and we're working towards that, it has to be embedded in all the different policies as well. So how about environment, you know, 
how about you know our HR team, for example, how are they getting involved as well? So that's a really, really interesting piece of work that we're doing at the moment. And ultimately, the goal here is that ABCD is business as usual. And we're doing that through service designs and also, you know, we're developing a leadership behavior framework based on ABCD as well. So it's all really, really exciting stuff within the council and something we've never really done before. I think we kind of just plod along as usual and, and kind of respond as and when we can. But this is some real positive action that we're taking. And then lastly is connected partnerships. I don't think I could sort of go through my presentation without mentioning the LDP, of course. Uh, so Basildon is one of the LDP areas. And with the partnerships one, it's it's just really about making sure we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, really, uh, and, and ensuring that ABCD is embedded in everything we do, whether that is commissioning, whether we're choosing service level partners and how we're embedding that into their agreements when they're renewing, um, but also, you know, the LDP is a huge program, but what's fantastic about it is we've got, for example, the microgrants, which is a test and learn. Traditionally, we're asking all of these questions to be able to give you a small amount of money. But actually, the test and learn is kind of here's the money. We're trusting you here and handing over that level of risk and saying, you know what, give it a go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That is what it's there for. And it's trusting communities but giving them that support that they need, that financial capital to be able to, to go forth and, and test their idea out and engage what's there as well. Um, and of course, the LDP is funding lots of wonderful things like, like this webinar and the, you know, the, um, the ABCD work that we're doing with Cormac and Nurture Development, uh, which has been really, really helpful. Um, and I'd like to just end on um, just a bit of a case study, really, uh, about a, a organisation we're working with called ATF, so Achieve, Thrive, Flourish, and they are working on a Basel Community Hub. So this is part of our Connected Communities policy about recognising where the community energy is. So they ran strength-based community discovery sessions, focusing on what's strong, and really asked, you know, what is it that you feel, what do you recognise when your community flourishes? And you'll see on the screen there just just a couple of things that's that's come up so supporting each other wanting to help and there was lots of things around safety on there as well the, the area that they're in in briscoe's primary school is not perceived to be a particularly safe area and what then atf have, have managed to sort of produce for us here which i really really like actually is that you know the community have identified these four pillars of their own you know thriving not just surviving connected resilient feeling well aspirations and, and their skills are growing as well but what I really like about this and it's not quite clear I don't think on on here and I think they're being quite modest is that actually this is an ATF doing this they're not doing it they're activating this but actually they've got 22 members of the community and residents that are volunteering their time to make all this all this happen I know that the gardening club was born out of, you know, a, a mum who felt quite isolated at home said, you know, I, I quite like, you know, getting into gardening. That was her gift. And she's giving back to the community and, and the school is there as an asset to allow her to do that, which is just wonderful. And as well, um, they've got 12 paid members of staff that are now, you know, they are now acting as activators in this space as well. Uh, but they've recognised where they needed support as well. So, you know, they didn't have anyone in the community that could provide advice on benefits. They had a quite high rate of, of unemployment as well. So they're working with the Citizens Advice Bureau. And that's, you know, a, again, something that we've got a service level agreement with. So we're really trying to connect everybody here. And I'd just like to, to end really on the last one, which is a little bit of a case study. Uh, and one of the fantastic ladies and the mums in, uh, in the community, Jelena. And... You know, she felt quite isolated, didn't really have a sense of community, kind of moved into the area. And actually her talents and her passion and her skills lie in, in, in taking, taking the lead, getting out and being active. And I don't think she really realised that at first. And she's now a part play leader. And she's also got together with a couple of the other mums and, and started a mums fitness group, which is great. And, uh, you know, on, on, a, on a really personal note, uh, my mum goes to the to the mum's fitness group. You know, I, I was born and I grew up in Basildon and, and my parents are still there. And, and my mum loves it. She, you know, she wasn't too involved in the community before, but now she's going every week. She goes to park plays, you know, she's meeting other members of the community and she works in resident involvement. So actually we're getting a more diverse range of community members as well, being able to have a voice in council decisions and kind of what we do as well. So I think, 
you know, it's really, really exciting. Uh, I'm really excited for what's to come. It's a five year strategy that started this year. So this is really just, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg here. And we've got all of the rest of the iceberg to figure out and make sure we're laying all these foundations. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to say thank you very much for listening and thank you for the opportunity to present. I'd be happy to sort of chat to anybody. Uh, my details are on the screen if you're interested to learn a little bit more. Uh, thank you so much, Millie. It's, it's, it's really great to hear not just your professional story, but your personal story as well, in, in, involving your family too. And, and Bazadon, I think everyone will, will see now, along with Colchester, really embracing the power of community building and ABCD. And, and the phrase that really struck me there, Millie, was ABCD in Bazadon is becoming business as usual. And um, that's a huge testament to everyone in Bazadon working towards that. We've just got just a few minutes left. I'm going to ask Cormac just for reflections on, on what you've heard from the two Pams and, and, and Millie. And obviously, officer, even some more hope for Essex. For yeah. Well, what gives me great um, encouragement is the sense that as professionals, many people are on the call here. What you're hearing, I feel, in what Billy and Pam, uh, Donnelly and Pam, Pam Green shared, and I think where Kerry is doing a great job facilitating, but he has his own stories too across Essex, and I know you do, is this story about how do we lead by stepping back? but not completely abandoning communities. So what you're hearing, I think, is folks who have figured out in their practice and with the resources they have available to them, not just to think about, here's a bundle of problems I'm gonna fix, but the story they're saying, I think very clearly to us, the story they're telling us rather, is a story about how they've figured out how to use those resources to really catalyze community-led action and cheer it on. And it's important, I think, sometimes we hear these stories, Kerry, and quite rightly, maybe people have a feeling of, well, what about services? What about programs? And we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there is a nuance to this, that you'll hear in what the guys are saying, that this helps them figure out then what are needed in terms of services and programs, because really the community can um, initiative uh, in Colchester and the work in Basildon and Pam's work, you know, uh, across the piece, they're all about saying we can't know what communities need until we first know what communities have. So in a sense, what this is doing is giving communities the opportunity to see the resources they have and then for us to better supplement those resources. So it's going to lead to much more equity, to a much greater partnership and to more people having fun and joy and activity in their lives. And what can be bad about that? So there's a lot to be hopeful for. And it's great those to hear words. the stories. Thank you so much for those words, Cormac. My job as facilitator is, is to keep our word and keep our trust. And the trust was that we would finish at 11.15. I could keep Cormac and Pam Green talking through to the end of the day. And I know that, but I just want to say a huge thank you to Cormac, who's in, in Dublin, Guessing Pam Green is in Brighton City, but she might be in Colchester. And Donnelly's in the town hall in Colchester. Millie's in, in Basildon. Thank you so much for your passion and for your, and for your time today. To everyone who's tuned in, I hope you found that really, really useful. Please take a look at the Active Essex Strategy and Implementation Plan. If you haven't done so already, and read about our work and commitment to strengthening communities, please have a good look around the Nurtured Development website. It's a treasure trove, content and, uh, and information. And Active Essex has added another ABCD course <coughs> starting in February because demand has been so huge. It's free, paid for by Active Essex and the ABP, uh, LDP. And we will email everyone um, who's, who's tuned in today with details of that ABCD course, which starts online in February. So thank you, everyone. That's the end of this webinar. And uh, we hope you have a good day and see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, folks. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Millie. Thanks.